a lot of a lot of people are asking me about um, about my staggering technique, about my TA, and especially the staggering technique, how it works and how it's done and why it's done like that. So I will basically go through it and um, and explain today how it is done and uh, how I make the trades and what I think when while while making those trades. Okay, so first of all and most uh, first and most of all, the the thing that I'm doing is identifying the uh, the trend. So for me, for me, there is one rule that is very important in trading. And it's never trade against the trend. So I don't like I don't like trading against the trend. I'm basically mostly going with the trend. Now, obviously, there are there are exceptions whenever. Uh, whenever you seem to believe, or whenever I seem to believe, there that there might be a, a trend change, or that we are basically getting to a decision point, and then and only then I'm I'm mostly looking at the indicators and seeing to what direction um, we might be taking at that particular point. So I have here uh, XRP. Uh, H19 contract open, and obviously the trend that we are seeing right now is down. So since since it's going down, normally I would I would suggest that um, that it is that it is um, well better to short than to long. Nevertheless, there's one thing, um, and this is basically the second step of my analysis, um, to set horizontal support and resistance lines. Obviously, here we need to see for more support lines because we need to see at what support line or which support line we need to break or to close below to actually um, continue going downwards and to to see to see a continuation of the downtrend now let's let's do it simply for ripple here and we have one very strong support and obviously i'm mostly going for um well for 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 the supports and lines that have uh the highest amount of touches this is this is how this is how I look for a validation and the importance of support and resistance lines. So we see, we see a one and last and most important standing support down here. So based on TA rules, based on everything what you can read and teach and look at, it would be based Basically, mean that if we close below, if we close below this line down here at 8849, this see another and another formation downwards of um, of the trend. So obviously, we are in a, in a triangle pattern since we saw we we see. You see basically a lot of going sideways and happening around here. Obviously, we know by now what mostly ha happens whenever a similar pattern like this, um, referring to November 2018, bit 6K down to 4K. So yeah, this is this is a a weak pattern in say. Regardless, there's to trade and see at what point your trade would be invalidated. Now, obviously, we are having the, these huge spikes down, where one spike down was probably an, an exception and nothing, nothing that that one should. Um, well, it happens. It's caused by liquidation. Or causing liquidations, and basically it just yeah continues uh, continues everything down. Um, nevertheless, of course, it's a 
and we need to see uh, the how and what is and what is happening with it. Taking a look at Ripple on, um, on here. Now the, the question will be okay. So the last, basically the last hope for Ripple to break this triangle and to make a leg up or to make an impulse move up would be basically a bounce from this support down here. Obviously, if we close below the support, it is not going to be, well, it's not going to be looking very good for Ripple, to be really honest. So, now, the thing is here, the staggering technique, um, where I'm always teaching four entries. So the four entries are basically helping you to cover to cover a spread from your initial entry to your um, to your stop loss because as as you can see for for example from the price right now all the way down to the to this stop loss it would be 1.44 percent obviously well if we if we take a look at the we take a look at the previous trade setup. The um the 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 spread that we needed to was basically two point three eight percent. All right. So obviously there have been or there are still very many traders who are trading one entry, one sub loss, and maybe even one take profit. Now this one here is basically the staggering technique helps you to be um to be wrong in your trade because nobody of us or no 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 of the traders has a crystal ball and knows exactly what is going to happen so since we do since we do not know exactly what is going to happen the first and most important thing that a trader has to focus on is to minimize the possible losses and not to maximize the, po the the possible profits, because I see a lot of traders are making or trading and getting emotional and whatever just because of that, because they don't know how to they, they don't they don't get it. It's more important to focus on how can I minimize my losses and not on how to get rich quick and not on how to uh, make as many gains as possible as fast as possible. It doesn't happen if you play Lotto, you might be the lucky, but you have to stay with, with playing lot, Lotto. You cannot play BitMEX and think that you will go 100x and wake overnight. So if you're, if, you're, if you're really not into gambling and you're taking trading seriously, the first and most important, um, how can I say it, amendment for you, for you and yourself, should be how can I minimize my possible losses? So, and obviously the staggering technique uh, helps perfectly to conquer this question, because on Bitmax the the most important um, value on Bitmax is your entry price and your exit price. Obviously, a stop loss is as well your exit price. So if you're if you're trading by the amendment, how can I minimize my losses? You obviously you obviously want to have your entry price as low and as near as possible to your stop loss. Because at that point, uh, the the closer your stop loss to the to the entry or the average entry price the smaller the losses are going to be so with this with this staggering technique and this is basically double staggering technique because i'm going i'm going to make a text as well um to move this around a little bit so simply some simply to make it to make it clear we will we'll take a look at the at the smaller um well at the um 
at a smaller case basically but i would simply say let's 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 show it and and let let me demo and, um yeah demonstrator basically show you and explain you visually visually how how it basically works so let's say we we pick four entries and i well, what i like doing is especially for your ta if you're actually doing charts and trades yourself make sure that your ta is as simple as and as understandable as possible it needs to be clean and needs to be yeah it, it simply needs to be easy the easier it is the likely more people or more traders are seeing the same and more likely than that your chances of being correct are basically increasing so let's say for example we are taking this one here as our first entry and we're going to we're going to be looking at at this at basically this pattern here so and we'll be taking this one as our first entry that one as our second entry and simply as you can see i'm looking i'm looking for horizontals that are having the most touches and this would be the third entry and let's say this boy on here would be the last and fourth entry so let me let me show you here so let's say on on this setup we would be covering a whole spread of a chart of 10.47%. Now, the question is, and this is, and this is once again back to the First Amendment of your of your trading. How can I minimize the losses? Now, you're always looking what is going to be my average entry price and what is going to be my stop loss. So, the first thing to set is always the stop loss. The stop loss is the is the moment is is the is the line that basically invalidates your trade invalidates your idea basically it says okay you have taken the risk you uh, you had a setup and since uh, since we have breached this line now it is invalidated it's not a big deal because you don't have you don't have a crystal ball nobody of us has a crystal ball so the very first thing of always is to set a um, a stop loss. Then obviously afterwards we are going for horizontals. And if I'm going, I'm going to take another, let's say a coin on Binance, whatever, whatever it's gonna be. I'm gonna take one of those and see um, see how um, or basically make make an example of a possible trade that I might actually afterwards post it uh, on the bot. So, but first of all, let's let me explain this the whole scenario here. So, and here we come to the most important part at how big your entries are. Now, yeah, obviously the the staggering that I am proposing it's basically one x. One x means one times the um, or let me, well, yeah. It's basically one times the percentage of the account that you want to choose. You can choose for your eggs, you can choose half percent of your account, which would be a low risk setup. You can choose 1% of the account, which is a medium risk setup. But as well, if you're very, um, if you like trading with high risk, you can even set for your X, you can set 1.5 percent of your account these are basically the possibilities and you can play around with them how and as much as you want to now the double staggering technique is basically doubling the position that you have every single time so 1x plus 2 equals 3x okay now 3x times 2 is obviously going to be 6x like this. So let's say we pick 1% of our account as the variable X 
uh, meaning that that we would add percent of here we would add another two percent of our account, and here we would add another six percent of our account. It depends on how and how big your X is. So back to this one here. One, one plus two equals three. Three times equals six. One plus two plus six equals nine. Nine two eighteen. It brings us to the very last stack of X. Now, as you can see, and we are going always back to the very first amendment that we said, you want to minimize your losses. If you want to minimize your losses, your average entry has to be as near as possible to the sub-loss, which is why we are starting with with the, the smallest amount of the trade, we're start, starting at the very top, which is basically having the biggest range to the biggest amount as near as possible to the stop loss. Now, at the end, you, let's say if you choose percent for your X, it's going to be 27% of the account, which is basically a um, less than one third of your account. Now, obviously, if you're having, um, let me let me let me make this one into a text here. So let's say um, our x equals one percent. Obviously, we have twenty-seven x combined, and that equals twenty-seven percent of the account. All right. So everybody, so everybody can can follow on this one. So now we are looking at the actual risk that we would have with the account, and we're taking this scale here, and we're looking, we're looking at what and at what would be our average entry should we reach this line down here, our stop loss. Now on the way this line here, we're entering here, we're entering this, entering this, entering this. So, for our average entry, what would we have X and one X, our entry would be here. Now, since we have one X and two X, entry is here after this line has been reached. Okay. So basically, the same thing here back again. It is... We have should we would we have three eggs exactly? We're basically adding half of it as well, which is another fourth of the um of the entry here. Doing the same here, would this be nine x? We would be in the middle of it, and since it is basically one point five or yeah yeah you know you know what i mean it's it's basically not 9x it's 18x so we're um we would be theoretically already in with 20 uh with 18x but we're adding another 9x which is half of the amount that is already open and it brings down our average entry to here and like this um obviously you have to use a calculator to be super exact, but this is this is how I use it to see a round number to choose a leverage afterwards. Now, here's the thing. Let's say let, let's be let's be generous and let's say this would be here our average entry. Now, from our average entry to the stop loss, we have now covered a range of 10%. And we narrowed it down to a possible loss of 3%. So basically, should everything go south, our average entry is here and we lose 3% of the position. If we're not using any leverage. Now, 3% of 27% of your account, let me simply calculate it. So, um, so see what, um, 
what small number it is, it's basically 0.81%, okay? So, I might write simply. So, since you're using, and here, 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 here is the amazing part of the staggering technique, basically, you're using 27% of your account in one trade. You're covering 10% spread, but your total risk of your account is only 0.8%. So, mm, Francesco is asking that the audio is poor. Tell me, guys, is the audio poor? Okay, so um, I, will, I will simply try to speak up and speak louder so everybody is able to hear me. So with this technique is basically we're covering 10% at 10% spread. We are using 27% of our account, but we're actually risking 0.81% of our account. Now, here comes the thing. How much or how many percent of your account do you want to risk? This is how you choose your leverage. Because let's say it is basically, um, okay. So this percentage, Is second. So zero point eight one times your leverage equals the amount of and percent of your account that you're risking in one trade. Now, let's say we would choose three x. Which is which is a reasonable and normal leverage to use for X. So and with three X leverage we would uh, risk or well let's simply make it See it and understand it like that. So, look, you look basically at this number, and you see with your setup, with your setup here, you would be risking that much of your account. Obviously, you're risking less than 1% of your account. You can do it, but it's probably something that not most of you want to do it. What I suggest, nevertheless, is that your number here after 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 the leverage times what you're risking without leverage it here is above five percent. If you're super very 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 sure that this trade is going to go into the right direction, you should <laughs> you should you should never exceed more than. Um, more than more than four percent of your account. So really, it's basically five percent. You, you should you should not even risk at any point in time five percent of your account. This is this is basically what I mean. Um, only only if you're very very sure of a trade, you should uh, you should risk more than three percent. I like staying between one and four percent for for the trades that I'm doing and for the trades that I'm setting up and yeah basically all of that okay so did um did everybody understand how it works and what the mathematics behind this is and basically how yeah how 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 all of this works and what 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 the thoughts behind this okay Ronald then understood it. Alex understood it. Kudansky said it's great. Perfect. Is everybody else sleeping or 
not 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 listening <laughs> or not understanding it. Come on, guys. <laughs> Type something in chat. That's calling function. Exactly. At the beach. Okay, okay. Yeah. So now let's say um we're going to look at look at the coin that we might possibly do a trade setup. I believe. And we'll take a look at IOTA BDC. Now. So let me take a look at IOTA BTC. I'm going to delete all of it. And now, OK, so on IOTA, once again, we are identifying the trend. The trend for me is still from the very top to the bottom. Now the question is, at what point in time do we break this downtrend? And uh, how, how, how does it happen? And uh, at what point in time is a downtrend devalidated? And for this, I very much use Fibonacci retracement because by the rules of Fibonacci, you're basically, it's, um, it's said that a trend is broken at its 61.8% retracement. So, meaning by that, this uh, this was this was the trend, and now we are seeing a correction of this trend. Should be close above the 61.8. This this downtrend at that point be officially broken and as you can see it's even aligning with one of the uh, with one with one of the resistances of a flag so actually um, looking invalid obviously also one question is at what point would we be seeing this trend continue and um, obviously since there is no um, there's no possibility to short IOTA, I would at this point say, well, we have to look for a possibility to long it. Obviously, to short IOTA, um, trend break would be 61.8, meaning by that that our, let me let me show you the, the short setup for, for IOTA in this case. So we would have, we would have our stop loss a little bit above um above the 61.8 simply to to go and be sure for the for these stop loss hunters as they are called and then obviously we would have our last and biggest entry on 61.8 we would have our second or one of the entries i'm currently looking Yeah. So we have one here now. Obviously, we need one more entry. This one has more confirmations. As a support and resistance line. So, on this one here, um, this would be obviously down here. We start with one X. This thing is freezing a little bit. So, we would start here with one X, two X, six X. Put this one into. into a text or okay. so we would have here one x and this one here 
Now we have the 2x. So obviously we would have the eight here. So for the hypothetical uh, short, because it doesn't, it really doesn't matter how it's called. If it's called IOTA, Ripple, EOS, Bitcoin, Shitcoin, MacBook coin, whatever, it doesn't matter. A chart is a chart, and the the rules apply on on a whatever chart. So if we were able to short this chart, this would be the traits of the for um for this for this chart and obviously we would be going here with um we take and take a look at the okay. so we take a look at this from the very first to our stop okay from the very first entry to our stop. Now, obviously, if you're going back, back to the, back to the, um, since we're using double staggering, we're following this, uh, the staggering technique. Meaning by that, you're going for the middle, and obviously we're between these two, which would be pretty much here, and then a little bit to it as well. Okay, so it's eventually, eventually it's it's basically um, after after the first one, it's basically middle to the middle. Um, this is this how I, how I look at it. Well, once again, middle, you have a little bit to it. So we're back at 1.85%. Now, obviously, should we be using 27% in a trade, we would be risking 1.85% of those 27% uh, in this one trade. So I would say this thing or the, the suggested leverage here would be 5x. This would be nice leverage because at that point, let's let's make it let's make it very generous and let's say we stop loss it with maybe some uh, slippage that the stop loss gets filled at market. By the way. Just a little bit later, um, we're we're basically with five x. We would be risking um, ten percent of the position, and our position is twenty seven percent of the account. Ten percent of it is two point seven percent of the account, which is of in every case reasonable. Okay, so this would be the short setup, obviously. Now. Be doing it. Down here. And oh my God. And down here. And then obviously we would take our stop. And put it simply below it. So, if you're if you're longing, this is this is always a nice uh, a nice way to to looking at it. Um, if you, if you don't if you don't have any any structure or well, look at the at the left side. At what point? Validate, but this is pretty much here on this one. So, obviously, one X stays, or two X goes down. Oh, wait, let me let me put it above. Look weird and confuse everybody. 
18x, okay? So here a of the account and down here. Now we're going to take a look at be able to take this particular trade setup. We are Thomas, back to a 10% spread. Thomas, two seconds. You're breaking up. Your yes. internet is uh, is your internet is lagging a little bit. So the last uh, minutes oh. you were breaking up. Well, obviously, this one here. Yeah, continue. It should should be should be better right now. I will also uh, take a look to yeah. Okay. I will go into a different room. Maybe the connection here is going to be a little bit better. So yeah. Uh, yeah, you sound more and more clear now. Yeah. Okay, so I'm back um, back in the room that that is like right next to the Wi-Fi. So looking back at this one, looking back at this trade setup, obviously we would be risking 10% of our, or well, no, not 10%. We are covering a spread of 10%. If this, um, yeah, if we if we are covering a 10% spread and we're using our staggering technique once again, looking at where our average entry would be. Um, obviously, here in the middle, a little, a little bit below, the middle, and below, and then the middle and below. So in this particular trade. We would be, let's be generous again on this one, we would be risking 4% of our open position without any leverage. Now, obviously, um, let's say we were using 27% in this one trade, 4% of 27% is 1.08% of your account. So you could easily take this trade without leverage and um, only skin 1% of your account, but in the very best and possible way, we would see a bounce, like it would fill up the order, the very last order, see the bounce or a pop. Basically, imagine, imagine basically the same We Thomas it would be yes. Uh, are you using a VPN, by the way, <laughs> because you're breaking up again? And it clearly is something with the Wi-Fi. It's I don't like know. It's I being, you're not using a VPN. Yeah, my normally, normally. No, no, my my uh, my guy is connected to. Right. It should, yeah. Now, now, now it says that I'm having a good audio connection. Okay. I believe now everybody. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Yeah. Okay. Now it's red, and I don't, I don't know what, what the reason for this one is. It's, it's really weird. I don't know. I don't know why. So. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. You can also, you also can call in into the system. That's I always do that because it makes the the sound better, but. Uh, yeah, so fine. Yeah, continue. Yeah, anyways. So basically on this one here, it would have been it would have been here the perfect trade setup because it would have filled up all of our four four orders and then it uh, would not have hidden the sub loss. Now obviously this would be trading in the past and we're in the present right now. And since we're looking at this trade setup, and this might be actually one thing that I will post on the bot after this call, and it's gonna be exactly this trade here. Obviously, 
this trade only then makes sense if you're using the correct staggering technique. Because if you're not, if you, let's say, if you use in, on every entry the same amount, this is what, what is going to happen. I can show you that. Let's say every entry would be 1% of your account. 1% in, you put another percent in here, so you're basically in the middle of it. Okay. Now, you would be putting another 1% in, which is the half of what you already have. Meaning by that, it would not go to the middle of it. It would be it would be less than the middle of it. So, um, oh my, no 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 no, not like this. So your entry would be basically at your second entry, even though your third entry hit. Now let's say you're using only one percent of your account, even though you already have three percent in. Now look at this. What is going to happen? One second. I'm not you. Boom. Your entry just moves a little bit down, and what is basically happening? You're not your uh, your risk doubles. Okay. So in that case, you would be risking 6.18 percent of of your open position. If you use the correct staggering technique, nevertheless, you would only risk. What was it? 3.84, 3.8, along along these lines. So this is this is the thing. Um, using using every entry the same amount, I can see why people are doing it. But if you actually look at it, if you actually calculate it, it's uh, it's pretty bad risk management. Um, you want to have your highest orders. As, as near as possible to your stop loss because at that point your average entry comes as near as possible to the stop loss and you're following your trade uh, trade amendment number one which is basically minimize your losses at all times so this is this is about the staggering technique and um, yeah Evo I actually believe that I will that I will post this trade um just just to make <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah cool cool just to make sure obviously and uh, as i as i said this trade only makes sense with the with the staggering technique so um i will i will have to post another note and uh, to it that, you, that the entries should be staggered and and uh yeah increase the stop loss otherwise you you're basically your um, the, the the loss would would double if you're not doing that <laughs> really interesting, Thomas. So, um, um, how much more would you like to to explain, or are you? Well, I believe I believe this is like um, for 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 the staggering. Um, I'm pretty sure that this uh, explained most of it, yeah. and everything else is just simply. Uh, the only thing that I can give on on the road for everybody is simply um, take a look, uh, take identify the trend, see for uh, see for horizontals, and use Fibonacci retracement to see at what point at what point your in this case downtrend would break into an uptrend. So yeah, in this case we we can we can this yeah. Use Fibonacci, use horizontals, use always a stop loss. <laughs> I still see sometimes people not using stop loss. And it's not very good. And then obviously in this in this case, if this long plays out, we are going definitely we're going to be taking profits on the 50% retracement on the 61%. And that I have it all ready, obviously. Now here, here comes the thing with, with taking profits. Um, if you, if you, if you would, if you like it safer, you would be like, okay, my very first entry is here, my first take profit is here. I'm almost, almost guaranteed to make, to make, to make some gains. And then next take profit, next take profit, and then 
you would put your last um, take profit on this one here. So you you would well, and yeah, you would basically enter here and take profit on. If you if you're more confident in IOTA, if you believe that this trade, or if you believe that you know something that might help it or might bring it up or whatever, um, or you simply like more risk, then you would put your last take profit all the way back there. So you would take profit the first time here, second time here, third time here, and then the last one all the way up there. So, And obviously, each take profit is 25% of your position. Now, here comes the thing. You want to have your stop loss always at a break even. So you enter a position whenever your first take profit is hit. The stop loss towards uh, or to your first to your first take profit. And this is and basically this is so if you if you if you like to save if you like to trade more safely and uh, if you if you like to save um, that risk not not that much interested in risk so let's say your second take profit hits what you would do is you would be moving this one disappear you would do here so basically, second second take profit hits, your stop loss is at, the, is at the first take profit. Now, in case obviously the third take profit hits, what happens? You move your stop loss to the second take profit, and so on and so on until, well, basically, if your last take profit hits, there's no more stop loss because you already took all the profit on the, on the position. So if the last take profit hits, your trade is done, you made, you made some money, and you made some gains, and yeah. Yeah, that is that is all that is all you want that you that is all you want to see while trading is making consistent okay. gains. And okay, um, Thomas. Again, um, yes. So let let me ask the group if if you guys have any questions or any things you want to, Thomas to uh, explain a little bit more. So please. Um, uh, put your question in the chat if you have. Otherwise, we'll uh, go and wrap it up. Okay, Thomas? Okay, no problem. Let me check if someone is is interested in asking any questions. Yeah, Marco was asking, do you use this strategy in all trades? Yes, I do. All trades that I do is followed with this strategy. Okay, let me check the old messages if we so a good explanation. Okay, yeah, I hope the audio quality, um, I, I mean, it's recording, so I, I think it's, uh, uh, not to, to make blame on anything, but I think it's your, your Wi-Fi that is uh, breaking up the audio quality. So I, I hope it, it is, uh, is not that annoying, but we'll see when we, uh, when I watch the recording back. Um, and I will share the recording, of course, in the in the in the portal. Um, so um, uh, let me see. Interesting. To, to... Okay. So Thomas, shall we wrap it up here? Yes, we can wrap it up here. Okay. Thank you, Thomas, very much for your time and your uh, your good explanation. And uh, guys, thank you for joining. I hope you liked it and that you learned something from it, and that it, uh, yeah, will guide you in your own trading. And uh, we'll explain more of uh, how Thomas uh, comes about his trades. So uh, I really like this uh, this type of style. So good explanation, Thomas. So have a great yeah. Saturday, everybody, and um, we'll talk soon. And for the people that are new or joined because they saw it in our Fairfax Crypto News Group, uh, yeah, you're welcome to join. Send me a message. And um, yeah, um, and, and last but not least, some of you uh, reported my message as spam. Please don't do that anymore because now my telegram is blocked just for inviting you to a free webinar. So <laughs> I'm not sure who did it, but uh, 
hope I get the blog soon. So uh, have a great day, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.